Games. It's Ian from RTO here. Welcome to a pick and mix. On a Thursday, we, the second show is always something different. And today it's mixing it up, which means we're going to look at the work of one of the finest producers. And today we're going to look at John Leckie. Well, John Leckie, uh, born in 1949 started work as a tape operator at the famous Abbey Road Studios in 1970 and one of the first things he worked on was George Harrison's All Things Must Pass then he worked on another Beatle one of the other Beatles um, John Lennon's album John Lennon he's also worked with Pink Floyd he was the balance engineer on metal and wish you were here also he has worked with Mott the Hoople on the album Mott, Paul McCartney's Red Rose Speedway and the single Hi Hi Hi. Other people that he's worked at the time is Roy Harper, Soft Machine, Sammy Hagar, Jack Riley's Western Justice album and the last recordings that Sid Barrett did. So apart from that he has won loads of awards. In 1996 he won two Best Producer Awards for Music Week Award in Q. He's won a Brit Award for Best Producer. The Music Managers Forum for Best Producer. The Music Producers Guild for Album of the Year in 2011. As long as I've got a BSACA gold badge. Pretty good. So he started producing albums in 1976. And the first album he produced was for a band called Bebop Deluxe. Now there are these were a uh, band from Wakefield in West Yorkshire and put together by singer, guitarist and Bill Nelson. And the album's called Modern Music. Uh, some good tracks on that one. The Orphans of Babylon and Bring Back the Spark. Good tracks on that one. 1977 he does the next album for V-Box Deluxe. It's the one that's most popular, and that is Drastic Plastic, which has got the track Danger Stranger on, a very popular track. Also in 1977, he started work with a great band called XTC. And the first album he did with them was White Music, which has got the great radios in motion, and this is Pop On, good album. The Adverts was next. Now these were a punk band. He did a lot of work with punk bands. And the album Crossing the Red. Bored Teenagers and Safety in Numbers are two prominent tracks on there. He'd also already worked in an engineer for Roy Harper. But in 1977 he produced his album Bolin Naimin Vaz. I think that's how you pronounce it which is pretty good and it's got the great uh, one of those days in England which is absolutely a masterpiece and the Watford Gap which is quite apt because Watford Gap is not far from me we move on to 1978 then and he does another one for XTC he goes to go to which has got Bus City and Talking Super Tough great tracks on that album then he went and did some, uh, produced an album for a band called Magazine. Now they were a rock band formed in the 70s. And uh, Howard DeVito, who went on then to form the Buzzcocks. The album was um, real life. The only track I really like off that was My Tupla Burst. It wasn't for me. Then he started working with Simple Minds on the debut album. Life in a Day, which has got, I like the track Life in a Day on that, and All For You, that's a pretty good. Then he does a, um, does some, produces the B-Box Deluxe Live in the Air K, in the Air Age, which is a live album. Then he does an interesting one <laughs> from Roger McDuff. Now, Roger McDuff is a well-known poet, and basically it's a poetry set to music. Not my sort of thing. I did have a quick listen to it. Poems are good. Yeah, but 
that's not my cup of tea really. 1970 R9, we're back off working with uh, Simple Minds and the album Real to Real Caffoni. Uh, I love Citizens, Citizen of Dance Youth on there and calling you your name. Then he does um, a solo album sort of project for Bill Nelson from V Box Dulux and it's called Red Noise Sound on Sound for Night Music and for Modern Young Lovers. Is it for, mo for Young Moderns? Sorry, got my words mixed up there. Pretty good tracks. Also, uh, the live album for The Doll. Now, these were another punk band um, and it's called Listen to the Silence. It's okay, not my thing. Moving to a new decade, 1980, he's back working with uh, Simple Minds and the Empires and Dance album. Today I Died Again is great, and 30 frames a second, great tracks off that album. Then he goes and does uh, uh, one of Andy Partridge from XTC's um, solo albums called The Lure of Salvage. It's not very good. I was a bit disappointed in that one. Um, 1981. He goes and works with a uh, band called Dupress. Now, Dupress are a Polish Norwegian rock band. I've had a listen to it. It's all right, actually. And they produced their album Block to Bot Block. Then in 1982, he does another album with Dupress product. I didn't think much of that one. Then it goes back to some more work with Mr. Roy Harper and the work, work of Heart album. Draw to Flames is a great track on there and the title, self-titled track is good as well. We move on to 1984, so he's, he's a very busy chap, is Mr. Le Lecky. Does his first album with the Manchester band The Fall, and it's the wonderful and frightening world of Coptic and Elves are good tracks off that album then he goes and does some work with uh, a band called Felt now these are a jangle pop band <laughs> formed in Water Orton of all places uh, this album was called The Strange Idols Pattern and Other Sto Short Stories some good tracks on this one Sem Sepitinal Darkness and Dismantled Kind is Off His Throne Good tracks they are. Go and have a listen to them. 1985 works with the fall again on this nation saving grace mansion and spoiled Victorian child. Are brilliant. Then he goes and works with uh, XTC again, but this is when they called themselves the Dukes of Stratosphere, and he worked on. He was the producer of 25 O'Clock, which has got some great tracks on it. Bike Ride to the Moon is brilliant. The Mole from the Ministry. Fantastic tracks off that album. 1986, he's back with the fall. And this one, Bend Sinister. Shoulder Pads number one is a great track. And the Riddler is as well. Then he goes and works on another Dukes of Stratosphere album. The Sonic Sunspot, Vanishing Girl and Shiny Cage. Outstanding. Then in 1987... He goes and works with an American band called Let's Active. Now, they uh, weren't around for very long, and they had an album called Every da Dog Has His Day. The title track's absolutely brilliant, and Night Train. Also, he didn't produce the album, but he produced five tracks on the one and only album by the Lars. So there you go. Also, in 1988, he worked with a band called House of Freaks. Now, this is a two-man band, uh, play guitar and percussions and the album was called Tantilla and the When the Hammer Came Down is a really good track along with Dawn's Off Prey and he takes a bit of a break and well deserved because he'd, <laughs> he'd been working so hard but in the meantime he was actually working on the odd songs on people's albums he's done so much work um, but he ended the year with the Stone Roses debut, the Stone Roses, and the great tracks off there are Wanna Be Adored and Waterfall. Then he takes his back break for two years and comes back in 1990. And the first thing he does in 1990 in the decade is work with the Poses, which are a power pop group. 
and their album Dear 23 there's only one track I don't might like on that and it's called Golden Blunders Apology then he starts he works with a band called Trash Can Sinatras now these are from Scotland and they're a pop sort of band and they produced an album called Cake and maybe I should try funny which is quite good 1991 he works with a band called Denim Denim now this is an indie rock band who from a guy called Lawrence who was with the felt and it's called Back in Denim it's a really good album Bubblehead's great and Living on the Streets 1992 he works with them some of these I've never heard of this one I've never heard of Robin Hitchcock and the Egyptianists um Roger Ro Robin Hot Hitchcock was a, is a songwriter and uh, he left he was in the Soft Boys there's a nice track on here the album's called Respect and it's called The Moon in Inside and then, then Your Dust pretty good 1993 he works on The Verbs debut album Storm in Heaven brilliant album it's got the brilliant virtual world and make it till Monday then he starts working with a band called Ride who are from Oxford um, they say they're the pioneers of shoegaze and alternative rock subgenre not I don't know and the album was Carnival of Light some good tracks on it I quite, I quite enjoyed listening to this and then it was from time to time and only now 1994 he works on the Radiohead album The Benz Planet Telex is great and S Street Spirit love that track 1995 starts working with an indie rock band called Cast on, on their album All Change they're from Liverpool led by John Power good tracks they are all right and tell it as it is great 1996 works with Cool The Shaker on their debut album K which has got the brilliant Govinda and Smart Dogs fantastic then we had a blip he went and worked with Mark Owen with of Take That and the album is shockingly rubbish but he comes back with a, a, a um, the force he works with a band called Spiritualize which is an English rock band formed in 1990 just up the road from me in rugby and the albums ladies and gentlemen uh, some good tracks on here come together and stay with me it's pretty good 1997 we're off working with cast again and their follow-up album mother nature calls free me is a good track mother nature's cool it's fantastic go and check this band out if you like a bit of indie rock we move on to 1998 he's still working hard and then he goes and works with a canadian band called cowboy junkies now this is an alternative country rope rock folk band this is a really good album this is one album that in this discovery of John Leckie that I'm going to look in more to and the album was called Miles From Home and the title track is Lovely and Final Feet moving into the last year of the 20th century 1999 starts off by working with a band called 6x7 they're an indie rock band from Nottingham and the album was Closer You Get. This is a really good album. I quite enjoy, enjoyed this one. My Life is an Accident, One Easy Ship Away. Really good. And then... He works. With Muse on the debut album, Showbiz. Good album, Sunburn, Muscle Museum, Cave great tracks um, good album I, it's one Muse album I love year 2000 he, he does the follow up album for Muse Origin of Symmetry what an album this is Newborns on there Citizens Are Raised Plug In Baby some great tracks fantastic album Two, uh, 2001 works with Los Lobos the American um, band from California 
rock and roll, Tex-Mex country, and they worked on their album Good Morning Aslan. Great album that this is. Uh, Good Morning Aslan's a fantastic track, and The Big Ranch, another good track. 2002 then, he, John Carson, The Power, does a solo album called Happening for Love. Great track with title track and TNT. 2004, he's still working. Can't believe he's still going. He works with an American indie band called Long Wave. And there's a fire. There's a fire and the flood of the most astounding tracks on there. Then he goes and works with the Blockheads. Yes, the band that was part of the Ian Jury. Uh, the album's called Where's the Party? And to be quite honest, it's very bad. I don't like it. I thought, oh, this will be good. It just wasn't the same without Ian Jury, I'm afraid. 2005, then, works with a band called My Morning Jacket. And a, an American rock band from Kentucky. And the album was called Z. Very psychedelic. Very good um, album. Uh, check it out. Uh, what a Wonderful Man's Good and Lay Low. Really psychedelic tracks. Then he works with a uh, Mexican female and male guitar flamenco people when they're called Rodrigo and Gabriela really good um, album Viking Man Orion is brilliant 2006 it's still going works with a band called the Tiny Dance as uh, an acoustic sort of band and Free School Milk is the name of the album pretty cool name I Will Wait For You and Bonfire of the Night's Good 2009, Portico Quartet. Now this is an instrumental, instrumental band with loads of people in it. Although this quartet, they have more people on stage. And the album was called Isla. And Line and Isla are great tracks. And modern percussion instruments, fantastic. Then he starts working with the Coral, and this is where he won an award for this album. Uh, Butterfly House. It's a fantastic album. Uh, Butterfly House and the, gr the green is the colour. A really strong tracks. Then he worked with Bellowhead. They're a ro rock band. Now this is an 11 piece band. Really good if you like your folk songs and shanties and the album was Hedonism. Captain Waterburn's great track. Broomfield Hill is as well. 2014 he's still doing it he works with a, a band called the pa palmer violets it's just two people and it's really good danger in the club is the album peter and the gun and matador the best tracks and then he works with the levers in 2018 and the album we the collective pretty good uh subvert is good and drug bus mcgee so there you go. He's had a huge um, catalogue there. So I had to now choose my top five albums out of that lot. I've had a lot of fun, but I've gone very safe here. Um, <laughs> because I can say so there's no ranking here, but there's ranking, but there's no marks on this. So my number five is the debut album from Stone Roses. Fantastic album. I want to be adored's on there. She bangs the drums. Another great track. Uh, Waterfalls on there, of course. Don't stop. Bye bye, bad man. Elizabeth, my dear. Song for my sugar spun sister. Made of stone. My favourite track on the album. Shoot down. This is one. I am the resurrection. Fool's gold. Really good. My number four is this one. Storm in heaven. The debut album from the Verve. Absolutely fantastic album. Lots of great tracks on here. We've got Star Sail, Slide Away, Already There, Beautiful Mind, The Sun and the Sea. Virtual World is brilliant, my favourite. Make it till Monday. Blue Butterfly, see you in the next one. Have a good time. Then I went for the Stratus, Dukes of Stratosphere, and the Sonic Sun, Sonic Sunspot. Brilliant album. Uh, Bashing Girls, brilliant on here. Have you seen Jackie? Uh, Lighthouse, 
Little Lighthouse, you're a good man. Albert Brown, Kaleidoscope, you're my drug. Shiny Cage, Brainiac's daughter's on here, affiliated and pale and precious. My number two has to be Call the Shaker. Okay. Hey, dude. Love that. Knight of the Towns on this. Temple of Everzast in Light. Govinda, my favourite track, my favourite track by the band. Smart Dogs, Magic Theatre in the Deep. Sleeping Jiva. Tativa, Grateful When You're Dead. Jerry was there. Brilliant tribute to uh, the Grateful Dead. 303, Start All Over. Hollow Man's brilliant. So that's that. But my number one has to be probably my favourite, it is I think the second favourite Muse album, Origins of Symmetry, every track on there is brilliant, from Newborn to Bliss, Space Dementia Hyper Music, Plug In Baby Citizen Erased Micro Cat Screen Ager Dark Shines Feeling Good and we end up with Megalomania so he's worked with a lot of people as John um there's albums there that I've discovered. That I thought, oh, I'm going to look into them. So there we go. That is uh, Mr. John Leckie. What a producer. Loads of awards. Been working. He's still... I don't know if he's retired yet. But who knows. Okay, that's all for this. Um, next week, I think we go back to uh, a top ten. Is it a top ten next week? I can't remember. So, uh, <laughs> I'll have to ask Dave. So that's all for the shows today. Um, but we'll be back tonight, of course. It's live stream night. If not, I'll be back tomorrow. And live album ranking tomorrow is Australian band In Excess. And we've got two new albums to look at. The new one from Metal Church, Congregation, Annihilation. And Sparks, The Girls Crying In Her Latte. So join me for them, and I will see you either on the live stream or see you tomorrow. Bye for now.